Hey, what's up? It's HJ, and it is September 1st. First off, it's my birthday month. Second off, it is fall. I'm already sipping, like, what is it? Pumpkin spice, almond milk, creamer. I got my fall nails. I got my fall eyeshadows. Um, I have a blue jean jacket on in California. So, it was, it was cold outside for, like, one evening, and I was like, yes, it is fall. I'm embracing it. I'm that person, but I don't like pumpkin spice lattes from Starbucks because they're nasty, so don't put me in that category. <laughs> All right, but for real, let's jump in. Today, we are starting week one of two. I know I was saying one of three, but third John is so short. It's literally a stretch to do two weeks. And what I really wanted to focus in on and help you guys see is how you can learn from a super random obscure text. It doesn't have much information about godliness particularly or characters of God or Christ or anything like that. So it's like, okay, what can I really learn from a text like this? Well, I'm going to show you how to even dig in to the most random obscure text. Let's get it. The elder to his beloved, I think it's Gaius, Gaius, we're going to say Gaius. I don't know. Um, the elder to the beloved Gaius, whom I love in truth. Beloved, I pray that all may go well with you and that you may be in good health as it goes well with your soul. For I rejoice greatly when the brothers came and testified to your truth, as indeed you are walking in the truth. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children are walking in the truth. Believe it or not, we're about to dig into that. Okay, so first off, anytime you see a heading, that is not scripture, that is not inspired, that is something that people added into scripture because back in the day, people would try to read their Bible while they were riding on horses and they were jumping up and down like this, reading their Bibles while riding on horses and they would lose their place a lot. So they added um, scripture breaks and headings. There are no scripture breaks in the original languages, okay? So that is not inspired, just just a little tidbit for you. The Elder, which we've already identified in our last book and just the name of this book, John. We're in 3rd John. Um, John wrote 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John. He calls himself the Elder. Something cool to note about calling himself the Elder is, one, we talked about how Elder means like the pastor or leader of a church. We know that John is an apostle, so why doesn't he say the Apostle John? Why does he say the Elder John? Well, um, controversial. I know um, the apostolic movement likes to use the word apostle and call people that as like um, statuses, like people can still be apostles. But honestly, the, apost the apostolic age um, is no longer anymore. You even see it with the, the apostles that were phasing it out in scripture. They were called the apostles. And then as time went on, they even just started to call themselves elders. Like we're leaders in the church. Technically, they were still apostles, but there were no more apostles after them. So, um, yeah, he is the Elder John. And at this point, they had been using the word elder for about 30 to 40 years already. Um, to the beloved guy. So this is to whom he's writing. He's writing to one person. And you'll see whenever we read the rest of the text next week that this writes like a personal letter. Whom I love in truth. So he's greeting him as a brother in Christ. We talked about loving in truth in much depth a few weeks ago so go watch those videos if you haven't it's just like how do we take the truth that we know of scripture and the gospel and the love that we're supposed to have for people and make it get a love that is specific to the gospel truth it's not just any love it's not whatever love we want it to be but it is love and truth and we're supposed to live and walk in that so go check out those videos um, i'll link them below if you haven't watched that Beloved, I pray that all may go well with you and that you may be in good health. Good health, this is a physical thing as it goes well with your soul. This is a spiritual thing. Well, spiritual. So one thing we can do when looking at scripture, if it doesn't seem to have you know, your little portion of scripture seems to be obscure, like this greeting, <laughs> like most greetings in the New Testament, or just other pockets of scripture as well. And it doesn't seem to have one theme. The theme is greeting. Like, what am I supposed to get out of that? Take it line by line and look at what the scripture is. Um, what's the word? 
I just woke up from a nap, so I'm, I'm waiting for my brain. That's why I'm drinking coffee. I'm waiting for my brain to kick in. <laughs> Look at what the scripture infers. Look at what scripture is saying underneath what it's saying, what it's pointing to, what it means by this. So you can ask yourself, what does it mean that John can pray that all goes well with you and that you may be in good health as it goes well with your soul? Well, he's saying as it goes well. So it, this is something that's already happening. It's already going well with his soul. He's already saved. He's already um, he's already beloved by Christ. He's already in truth. So let's pray for your physical health. It is okay to pray for physical things. It is okay to pray that God heals you. It is okay to pray that God um, helps you, you know, get a raise. You can support your family better or helps you to buy a house because you would like to own something that you can pass down to your children or that the Lord helps you um, have a child or the Lord helps you X, Y, Z. Fill in physical needs. It is a wonderful thing that our souls are already taken care of, but we also have a God who cares about our physical needs, about our body, about our lives, about our minds, about our finances, about our everything. We have a God that cares. God cares about the physical. He's the great physician um, when it comes to our spiritual. But he's also the God that owns all things and blesses us as he sees fit, obviously. He's not a genie. We don't just make him do what we want. There's no promise here that just because he prays for his good health, he's going to be healthy. But it's like we have a God that cares and wants to hear our prayer. So shout him out. Pray to the Lord and don't ever think that he doesn't care about you past your salvation okay so that's something we can pull from that again when you're looking at obscure texts you're just going line by line and you're saying okay what are truths that i can that i can pull out we're not trying to like twist or add to scripture in any way but we're saying if they're talking like this then that must mean this and that must show this and these truths exist so we're not adding the scripture. You want to be careful not to do that, right? Like I wouldn't want to look at this and say, because he prayed for good health, he will be healthy. Scripture doesn't say that. It just says, I'm praying for your health. God cares. God wants to hear that, right? So then next line, verse three, for I rejoice greatly when the brothers, so brothers throughout scripture is always talking about believers. So when other believers came and testified to your truth as indeed you are walking in the truth and so they came to john and they testified meaning just like telling him all about the truth that this man gaius is living in and so let's break down this to your truth i know <laughs> i know our culture is really big on like what I'm living in my truth, you're living in your truth, whatever's true to you, whatever's true to me, like that's what it is. Walk up to somebody who doesn't think sin is real because that's their truth and steal their wallet and see how they feel about it. They would be real mad real quick because you do recognize that there is a standard and there is a truth by which we should live. So this to your truth doesn't mean that he's in this weird, like first off, I don't even know if postmodernism existed in that time, don't quote me, but... I don't think people thought like that in the biblical days, like my truth is my truth, yours is yours. They went by like religious systems, but there were still other systems than Christianity. Um, so that's not what he's talking about. He's just saying in general, the truth that you hold to, you are living in, as indeed you are walking in the truth. So look, catch this um, two sides of a coin. So there's a truth that he is, lit, that he is claiming, and there's a truth that he is walking. So let's pull that from the scripture. Let's look at that deeper. What does it mean to be a believer, a beloved in Christ? So you, you hold to truth and you walk in truth. So are there truths that you're holding to that you aren't walking by? Are you being faithful in your Christian walk? Would others look at your life and testify to somebody else that you are holding to the truth and are indeed walking in the truth? Would people speak of you like that? Another thing we could look from the scripture and say is, look, these brothers in Christ are testifying 
well about another brother in Christ? Are you speaking highly of other people? I'm sure that this man was imperfect. I'm sure he had sins. I'm sure he had issues. But they're speaking of his godliness and that he's walking in the truth and in the way that he's loving the Lord. Do you speak well of other people? That's something that we could ask ourselves from this text. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children are walking in the truth. So again, something we can pull from this is right here, remember, John is an elder. Right here in the beginning, the elder, which means he is like a pastor, a leader over a church. And he is finding great joy to hear that his children, and this is meaning like children of the faith, so his congregants, his, you know, you've heard of like a child in the faith. Maybe it's somebody you've discipled, somebody you've raised up, somebody who's just been in your church and you've seen growing godliness, that they are walking in the truth. It brings great joy. Whenever you are a part of a church, um, a local church, you're submitted to them, you are in fellowship with them, you are a um, member of this church, your pastor is accountable for your soul to the Lord. And so bring him great joy and walk in the truth. Because get this, his truth that he's walking in affects other people. Do not be deceived in thinking that the way you live your life, whether it be walking in the truth and walking in love and walking in Christ, or whether it be walking in a selfish state, a backslidden state, a sinful state, whatever it may be. Don't be confused and think that it only affects your life. Or maybe just your household, maybe just your brothers and sisters, maybe just your parents, or maybe just your spouse or your children. No, like the people in your church, when you are a regular part of your church and you are in community with them, especially your pastors who are taking account for your soul, how you live matters and affects the people around you. That's another truth that we can pull from this little portion of scripture. So one, God's got you spiritually. He already saved you. Don't be afraid to pray about your physical. God cares about you physically. How you talk about other people, that matters. Talk about other people in the faith highly Point out their highlights, point out the goodness, point out their servanthood, point out their the, their beauty, okay? We can't live this your truth, my truth. Like, hold on to Christ, and whenever you claim it with your mouth, live it with your life. That's in verse 3. In verse 4, four how you live affects the people around you. We just actually got many nice, really encouraging nuggets from just like a greeting in scripture. Um, later, we're going to see next week that gay, Gaius, <laughs> I don't know how to say his name, Gaius, Gaius, I don't know, that he's actually a missionary that they're about to send out. Next week, we are going to be talking about missionaries, um, which is actually a really interesting topic, especially the way that they talk about it in 3rd John. I'm really excited about that. So share this video, um, encourage somebody else, ask a million questions when you're reading scripture, and you will always find nuggets of truth in God's word. It's never boring. It's never stale. It's... Um, it's a beautiful thing. So I love you guys and I'll see you next week. Don't forget to subscribe.